What's up, crypto enthusiasts? My name is Peter Gurr, and I'm a blockchain enthusiast, a Bitcoin hodler, and the founder of Wise Token, which is a decentralized staking protocol that launched less than a month ago. So I have a bit of a different background compared to most founders I know. I'm a military guy, a U.S. Army soldier, and I was in Afghanistan when Bitcoin first got created and started becoming popular. I missed the boat of the of, uh, being early. And uh, so I didn't learn about it until I came back to the US, uh, started my career as a real estate entrepreneur. And uh, when I was looking for more investments and more ways to earn passive income, I stumbled upon Bitcoin blockchain technology, was completely blown away by how it works and uh, started learning everything I could about it. So by Thanksgiving 2017, I was an avid cryptocurrency student, and I, by that time I had countless conversations with my family and my friends, onboarded a lot of them onto Bitcoin uh, by Thanksgiving, and uh, it was a it was it was a wild ride up. Like what like what a crazy ride. So that's a wonderful. Uh, period during 2017. And then the years after, I learned three very important lessons in crypto, which I'd like to share with you, because these were the basis for why I created Wise Token. So the first one is very simple, and it's never give up custody of your crypto. Uh, I, I learned this the hard way because as, as soon as I made those gains in Bitcoin, I ended up uh, giving my Bitcoin to a platform that promised uh, to pay a return in interest for for my Bitcoin, and it turned out to be a total scam, and I lost my Bitcoin and my gains in 2017 with it. So I, I learned the hard way that if it's not my keys, not my crypto, and never give up custody of your crypto to another entity. And so I, that's why I created Wise as a 100% decentralized system. So it's it's on the Ethereum network. It is a smart contract. Uh, no admin keys, completely decentralized. You never give up custody of your crypto, even when you're staking. Uh, it's always in your wallet. You can stake with a contract and then you mint it back into your wallet when you're done. So it never at, at any point are you giving up custody of your crypto to any centralized controlling party or third party entity. The next point that I would like to share is that I noticed most cryptos are not really fair. And I see a, a, a correlation between the fairness of the crypto's design, especially their launch design, and the overall sustainability of that crypto over a long period of time. Uh, most cryptos nowadays are just cash grabs, and, and you can't expect them to be there in a year because they're not fair, which ends up meaning they're not sustainable. So I, I want to bring up Bitcoin and Ethereum as an example here. Bitcoin is a great example of economic decentralization. Now, no cryptocurrency is, per, is perfect, but Bitcoin did a pretty good job with economic decentralization. Everybody had a fair chance to be able to mine Bitcoin, and nobody ended up with a massive lion's share of, of uh, Bitcoin supply. You know, just uh, even the biggest holders nowadays are just a few percent. Um, very unlike some cryptos on on the market now that have hold, holders that hold you know 20 30 40 sometimes even 50% even if that is the team that's still a risk for new users uh, to, you know, if they buy the crypto, there's these massive mega whales that can destroy the price on them. That's an aspect of centralization that's uh, that, that you don't want in crypto. So Bitcoin is e economically decentralized. Ethereum has an aspect of fairness around it as well with the fact that it's all free real estate for anyone to upload their own uh, decentralized smart contract that you can deploy it on the Ethereum network. Uh, you just got to pay a gas fee for the for processing the transaction. It doesn't cost you anything besides that to be able to use the Ethereum system and upload, uh, you know, your programmable money. So that's an aspect of fairness. And so I think it's no by no coincidence that the top two cryptos by far are some of the most fairest cryptos in the space, economically decentralized and fair. So wise is fair as well. You're going to see that here in a minute. But what I really want to focus on is the third point, which is that asset-backed cryptos don't really exist outside of stable coins, and they should. 
So we've had the technology for a couple years now to be able to create the uh, asset-backed cryptos the way Wise was created as an asset-backed crypto. I'm going to show you how that works, and and uh, and you're going to see how how awesome that is to have an asset-backed crypto, and and why you would want something like that. So first of all, let's talk about the fairness of the of the Wise launch. Uh, we had a 50 day uh, token sale before our launch, where the contract auctioned off 50 percent of the supply at a rate of five million Wise per day. Uh, anybody was free to send Ethereum to any of these days. It, it was a, it was an auction. You know, more the more Ethereum that was sent, the more expensive that is. I didn't get any free tokens. My team didn't get any free tokens. Um, everyone had to participate on an equal playing field. And as you can see, by the end of the 50 days, uh, we had almost 9,000 users, uh, unique wallets, and 57,900 total Ether, which was about $43 million of Ethereum at the time. It's about uh, doubled and Ethereum is about doubled in value since then. So because of this auction nature and the fact that it was fair, it w nobody got tokens for super duper cheap like you see in some pre-sales, we, we have economic decentralization. So we don't have any mega whales. Uh, we have Uniswap, number one holder. That's all locked to liquidity. You're gonna see that here in a minute. And then the top holder is only 1% of the supply and uh, it, even if you consider the amount, the, the, the biggest staker in the system is only 3% of the supply. So users uh, joining WISE today don't have to worry about whales cashing out on them and uh, destroying the price. We, we just don't have whales like that. So now we get to talk about the most important part, which is what happened with the money. So you see, you know, that's that money that got raised. 2,000 of it went for the development and for the marketing of WISE, but 55,900, that's 96.5%, went along with the other half of the WISE supply to form the initial liquidity here on Uniswap. And so you can see right now we're the number four pair, $211 million worth of liquidity, pretty awesome. And you can see that we started with 55,900 ether and we have a net positive of about 20,000 ether in addition to that, pretty, pretty awesome. Um, and so you can see that uh, not only was the almost all of the of the money put here into liquidity, but also that liquidity was locked, and that was done manually by the contract through burning. The liquidity the liquidity provider tokens were burned. You can see ninety nine point nine percent of the liquidity uh, is here in a burn address. That is the liquidity that was burned. So that means that this this uh, liquidity is never removable. So we've got a two hundred million dollar unremovable pool of liquidity. We're using it very differently than most people use Uniswap. Just as an investor, we're using it as a bank because this because this is unremovable. That means that everybody who owns Wise, they're the only people that can access this ether right here. And so started and also. Um, it's a bank that grows in value because everybody that participated in the token sale now is in big profits because we've had 20,000 Ether worth of extra net positive buying after the token sale, which has given an ROI to everyone. Um, so this is this is very significant, and even if a hundred percent of the of the Y supply were sold, we're talking whether it's staked or whether it's liquid and wallets. If all of that were were available right now and sold back, and there was zero holders for Y's, there would still be twenty eight thousand ether in this pool. It would still be a seventy million dollar pool. Um, and still top ten on Uniswap. So that is how ridiculously massive this bank is, it's so big that even if everybody cashed out and there were zero holders, there would still be $70 million of liquidity, top 10 liquidity pair on Uniswap. That is the power of asset-backed crypto. So that comes with a price floor because even if you were the last person cashing out, you're still getting some of your ether back because there's enough ether to be able to pay everyone, uh, even the very last person. So there is a price floor. 
Now, WISE is a staking token, and you can stake it over time in order to earn interest. And when you stake it, you lock it up. And, there, and there's penalties for ending a stake early before it's matured. So that means that um, whoever is staked, that actually raises the price floor. And you can see we have over 80% of our circulating supply is staked, which has risen our price floor up to 28.7 cents worth of Ethereum. So the very bottom unbreakable price floor if, if, if there was zero holders left would be about six and a half cents of Ethereum. And because 80% of stake that has risen to 28.7 cents in Ethereum uh, being the price floor, which is only 43% down from the current price. So not only are the people in the presale protected, uh, because people buying now are protected too. This is one of the, this is the only crypto I know of where uh, people spending their ether to uh, purchase wise that ether goes into the liquidity pool and their worst case scenario right now is that they lose 43 percent of that ether that being the very worst case scenario where not only everybody cashes out but they're the last person to cash out too um, so there's there's no there's no other um safety mechanism like that unless you create an asset backed crypto like we have right here um, so let's go over to the staking portal and you can see that you can stake wise right here if you don't even have wise yet you can just use ether and the website will use uniswap to switch it to wise for you and you and you can make your stake you can stake for as little as one day although not recommended given the current gas fees going in and out um, you can stake for up to 42 years. Uh, here's five years right here. And you can see the longer you stake, the more bonuses you're gonna get. So lo longer pays better and you're earning more interest. And so to explain how this works, it's best when compared to Bitcoin mining. There's actually a lot of similarities between staking wise and mining Bitcoin. The benefits of uh, staking wise is that you don't need all the extra equipment and paying for electricity that you do when you're mining Bitcoin. For staking, you just need to have some wise or some ether and, uh, and, and, and you can stake it. Uh, immediately. So Bitcoin miners get paid with Bitcoin every 10 minutes when a, when a block, when a digital block is complete. Same way, it's, uh, stakers get paid with Wise and the Wise system every day as long as you're staked. So instead of having to have a computer rig, uh, all you have to have is, uh, is Wise. You have to have it staked and you will earn interest every single day. So the more miners mining Bitcoin, the less Bitcoin that they're going to make because there's less Bitcoin to go around. Same thing for stakers. The more stakers that are staked, the less wise to go around. However, it works the other way too. When uh, my Bitcoin miners give up, they get paid more Bitcoin. The, well, the remaining ones get paid more Bitcoin. Same thing with wise. When people end their stake or leave the system, then uh, you're going to be earning more wise on a daily basis. And the last point here is that miners provide constant selling pressure because they have to pay their rent, salaries, hardware, and most importantly, electricity bills, where Y stakers provide price stability and a price floor because they get paid not to sell. So um, Y's interest gets paid to stakers. The average stake is over two years long. So there isn't that immediate sell pressure for the new wise coming into the system like there is for the new Bitcoin coming into the system. And, and so that's one of the perks of what's going on right here. So that's a really quick overview. If you would like to learn more, I actually, um, live stream three times a week on YouTube. My channel is wise staking. I'm going to put my socials up here in a minute. Uh, but we also have a very helpful and a, and a vibrant community on Discord and on Telegram. And also you can learn a lot of info from our website, which is wisetoken.net as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put up my socials right here. Thank you so much uh, for listening to that presentation. Uh, here is our socials and I will see you next time.